Mysteries uh, Sunday School here in Dover, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're so glad uh, you've joined us uh, today as we uh, continue our study of the prophecies of the Bible. We last uh, left off in Ezekiel. We had uh, concluded uh, chapter 7. So now we shall continue in chapter 8. In chapter 8, Ezekiel is uh, given a vision. He sees a burning man who then lifts him up into the sky and gives him a vision of Jerusalem. They uh, travel um, throughout uh, many parts of the city. And in each uh, area, uh, the burning man uh, reveals to Ezekiel the idolatry that has uh, overtaken the city of uh, Jerusalem. Uh, they travel to uh, you know, the various gates and uh, the temple and uh, nothing but idolatry. Everybody is worshipping other gods but not the one true God. So, at the conclusion, in verse 18, God uh, proclaims his judgment uh, against all idolatry. It says, Therefore, will I also deal in fury, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, and though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Uh, that's prophecy 2250. Chapter 9. The uh, vision actually, this vision actually uh, continues. Here, uh, God, uh, call, in the vision, God calls uh, six men, each with a battle club, uh, to the temple court, courtyard. They're given an assignment. They are to, uh, mark, uh, to mark the foreheads of every single person who is grieving over the sinful nature that has befallen uh, Jerusalem. Once they do that, they are given uh, the order to slaughter everybody, everybody else who does not have a mark on their foreheads. So that would be uh, prophecy uh, 2251. Uh, God will spare the ones who are grieved and are uh, repentant over the sinful uh, state of Jerusalem. Which uh, tells us uh, that uh, Jerusalem was not uh, entirely corrupt. Uh, there were a few who uh, refused to uh, partake in uh, the sinful ways of the city, and uh, thus were spared. This again shows uh, the justness of God. Uh, the, death, the death sentence only came down on the ones who were uh, unrepentant of their sins. We uh, skip chapter 10 and go to chapter 11. Starting in uh, verse uh, 1, it says, Wherever the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house, looked east eastward, and behold, at the door of the gate, five and twenty men, or twenty-five men, among whom I saw Jezaniah, Jeaz the son of Azur, and Pelatia, the son of Benaiah, prince, princes of people. And he said unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city. So these 25 men um, were counselors in the city. Uh, men, um, men who uh, counseled. As far as uh, what particular counsel that was, I'm not certain. Could have been legal counsel, uh, could have been spiritual counsel. It could be uh, counsel in business. Whatever, a counsel, whatever kind of counseling these men did, God uh, judged them as wicked. 
and um, in verses uh, 7 through 11, it's prophecy uh, 22, 52, it's the uh, judgment uh, that would uh, fall upon these uh, men. Um, the pro in the prophecy, it says that uh, the 25 will be brought forth out of the city, a sword will fall upon them, and uh, they shall be uh, delivered into the hands of strangers, where uh, judgments uh, will uh, fall upon them by the strangers. It says they will fall by the sword, and also that uh, God himself will judge them in the board of Israel, so that they will know that he is Jehovah. Okay, we go to uh, verses uh, 14 through 16. It's uh, prophecy uh, 22:53. Here it talks about how uh, the people of Jerusalem uh, will be scattered, but while they are scattered, uh, God promises uh, to be a sanctuary in their dispersion. Uh, verse 16 says, "Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen." And although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries uh, where they shall come. So, um, by saying that he, God, will be their sanctuary, that means there won't be any uh, physical temple uh, for them to go worship and uh, sacrifice. Um, Book of Daniel you know, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, despite being uh, imprisoned in a uh, foreign country, uh, dispersed into a uh, foreign country, they were faithful to God. God remained uh, faithful to them. Uh, when they were thrown into the furnace, you could say God provided a sanctuary for them inside that fire. Okay. Verses uh, 17 and 18 uh, talk about uh, the remnant that will uh, return to Israel when the uh, time of captivity has been satisfied. Verse 17, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. Okay, that's Prophecy 22.54, and Prophecy 22.55 is in 19, found in 19 and 20. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. So, this remnant... Uh, would come back uh, with a clean slate. Uh, all, all the idols and idolatry that uh, brought judgment on them before, on that generation, they will be free from it. They will uh, only have a heart for God, and uh, they will only have one God, which is the true God. Which, of course, uh, fulfilled in the books of uh, Ezra and Nehemiah. And then... Verse 21, Prophecy twenty-two fifty-six. 56. But as for them whose heart walketh after their detestable things and their abominations, I, recommend, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord. So, um, again, uh, it's uh, judgment for the ones who, um, who refuse to, um, to turn from their idolatries either uh, as they're being attacked by Babylon or in captivity in other countries. And uh, given uh, the absence of uh, such idolatry upon uh, the remnants returned to Israel, I'd say that was most definitely fulfilled. Chapter 12. Um... Ezekiel is once again given an assignment to uh, act out a prophecy that will uh, fall upon uh, Jerusalem. 
you recall last time, he was given an assignment to lay on his uh, left side for uh, 390 days and his right side for 40 days. Uh, one year for every uh, year of captivity or judgment. Uh, in this one, he is uh, verses 1 through 7. His assignment is as follows. He is to prepare his stuff for moving and is to remove and, and is to move his stuff in the sight of the people by day. And uh, he is to uh, move uh, his belongings from uh, one place to another place in their sight. Uh, this is um, this was to be uh, symbolic of uh, being taken into captivity. You know, you're packed up, uh, pack up your stuff, and forced to go from one place uh, to another. Moving on, he is um, he is also told to dig through the wall in their sight and carry uh, his stuff out thereby. Upon uh, upon digging through the wall, he is to uh, bear it up, bear the his stuff upon uh, upon his shoulders in his sight and carry it forth into the twilight. And he is to cover his face and not see the ground, for all these actions are prophetic of the captivity of Israel. Uh, he did what he he did what he was told uh, in verse uh, in verse seven. And then uh, God spoke uh, the meaning of his actions, uh, starting uh, verses uh, 10 through 11. Uh, the people of uh, Jerusalem will uh, go into captivity, and the prince uh, that is among them, uh, that prince's name is Zedekiah, he is the king of Judah at the time, he is to bear... He says he will bear upon his shoulder in the twilight and go forth. Uh, prophecy uh, 2257. And then prophecy uh, 2258, the identity of uh, Zedekiah, the prince. He, how he, will, uh, he himself will dig through the wall to carry out and how he, shall cover, he too shall cover his face and uh, not be able to see the ground with his eyes. And then in verse 13... Prophecy uh, 2259, uh, God says, My net will also uh, be spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, uh, to the land of Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, though he shall die there. So, you know, God's uh, net will uh, capture him and will uh, transport him to Babylon. And then in verse 14, Prophecy 2260. And I will scatter toward every wind all that there are about him to help him and all of his bands, and I will draw out the sword after him. Um, the army of uh, Zedekiah was scattered and destroyed, and all but a very few uh, remained. Uh, that's covered in uh, 2 Kings. Chapter uh, 25, verses uh, 4 through 7. Okay. And I uh, forgot to mention, uh, the reason why uh, Zedekiah won't be able to see himself being taken to Babylon is that he'll be made blind by the uh, Babylonians. Uh, that was covered in um, 2 Kings, chapter 25, verse 7. Okay, moving on. Uh, Ezekiel is given uh, a new a next a new assignment, starting in verse seventeen. It says, "Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat your bread with quaking, and drink your water with trembling and uh, carefulness." Uh, what this symbolized is covered in verses uh, nineteen and twenty, uh, prophecy uh, twenty two uh, sixty one. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and of the land of Israel, they will eat their bread with carefulness, and drink their water with astonishment, that her land may be desolate from all that is within, because of the violence of all of them that dwell therein. So, 
more or less, God is saying uh, they won't be able to even eat in peace because of the violence and desolation that is going to befall Jerusalem. Uh, verse 20, And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land will become des desolate, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yes, um, when God uh, says they shall know I'm the Lord, he usually does it in very, very shocking and astonishing means. Because that's really the only way to get through the hardened hearts. Okay. Verse 21. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Uh, another version says, uh, it says, time passes, time passes, and the prophets are all made liars. Simply uh, what Israel is saying, uh, the passage of time will prove every single prophet a liar. Most, uh, I think more specifically, that refers to the prophets of doom, such as Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel too. God then says, Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. So, God is simply saying, The time has now come to fulfill what the prophets have been saying. That's uh, prophecy 2262. Something important to remember. God doesn't necessarily move uh, as soon as the prophets speak. He'll move uh, when he knows the time is right. You know, uh, that really makes me think about uh, the second coming of Christ. It's been prophesied in the Bible. It's been, what, 2,000 years in the making. And, those, and there are those that scoff at the notion, you know, where is the second coming? But um, one day, when uh, God decides the time is right, the second coming is going to happen, because the Bible says it will. Right. Verse, uh, verses 26 through 28. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done. So, God is, this is prophecy 22:63. expect it to happen soon. Uh, there are those who say, who might say, Well, we believe what you're saying, but we don't believe it's going to happen in our lifetime, so we're not going to concern ourselves with it. And uh, God is saying, no, 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 it's going to happen, and you're going to see it happen. Again, Prophecy 22, 63. Right. Chapter 13. And this chapter, uh, God calls out uh, the prof both the prophets and the prophetesses. He, uh, he calls them out, saying that uh, they are prophesying falsely, just making up stuff to uh, bring attention to themselves. Uh, you know, verse, uh, verse 6 says, They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, And the Lord hath not sent them, and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. So... There are some people uh, out there prophesying in the name of the Lord when God never actually called them to prophesy. You know, they, have, they simply call themselves to do it. Uh, verse 7, Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, The Lord say it, I believe have I not spoken. So, uh, verses uh, 8 and 9 uh, foret foretold, foretell the judgment that would fall upon uh, the false prophets. That's uh, 22, uh, 64. Uh, 
in these verses, uh, God says, I am against you. My hand will be upon the prophets that see vanity and divine lies. They will not be in the assembly of my people. They will not be written in the writing of the house of Israel. They will not enter into the land of Israel. They will know that I am Jehovah God. They will not be among the counselors, the ruling body, or elders of my people, or be honored with the leading men of uh, Israel. Okay, then we scoot down. And um, here, uh, God uh, refers to uh, through, first refers to a uh, symbolic wall, um, a wall that uh, apparently uh, they thought they were protected uh, by something, but God says. Verse 10, because even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them, which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall, there shall be an overflowing shatter, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall not be said unto you, Where is the daubing? wherewith ye have dubbed it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will rend it even with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger, and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So, it seems this uh, wall that God is addressing is um, their false promises of peace. And... Um, and these promises of peace certainly uh, gain them great favor amongst the people. Well, God is going to shatter that illusion when his judgment comes. And uh, they will more or less be exposed as uh, phonies. At least that's how I see it. Then we go down to starting in verse 17, where uh, God begins to address the prophetesses. It says, Likewise, thou uh, son of man... Set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. Uh, their judgment um, is as follows, through verses uh, 20 through 23. I am against your pillows, where, wherewith you entice men into your agendas or groves, where you practice magical arts. Um, as far as these pillows... Uh, there are those who believe they are uh, magic charms uh, that they uh, tie around um, they tie around their, their wrists and their arms. So God says, "I will tear them from your arms and liberate your victims. I will also tear your kerchiefs and deliver my people from you. There will be there will be no more in your hands to deceive and enrich yourselves. You will see no more vanity or divinations." or I will deliver my people from you. That's the same thing uh, that God had said to uh, the prophets. They shall be delivered from your vanity and divination. So, both these false prophets and false prophetesses, they are being cut off. Uh, they will no longer be able to have any influence on the people of Israel. At least, um, at least uh, the ones that were uh, living at the time this prophecy was spoken. Afterwards, uh, God uh, does not address that. Uh, chapter 14, verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of it by them, by all of them? So, uh, here God is addressing the elders of Jerusalem and how uh, their idolatry has uh, set up uh, stumbling blocks. Problem. Not just for themselves, but uh, most likely for uh, other people who uh, follow their example. After all, they are uh, elders. 
Um, verses uh, 4 through 7 is uh, prophecy uh, 22, uh, 67. Here God states that every man of Israel that sets up his idols in his heart puts a stumbling block of iniquity before his face and comes to the prophet, I will answer him according to his idols and that everyone in Israel who separates from me setting up his idols in his heart puts a stumbling block of iniquity before his face and comes to the prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I will answer him myself. Oh. So uh, they're going to be hearing uh, directly uh, from God, uh, these elders who have set up idols in their hearts. And his judgment is, is as follows in verse 8, And I will set my face against uh, that man, and will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Furthermore, it says in verses 9 through 11, And the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him, and I will uh, destroy him in the midst of my people, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. Verse 11, That the house of Israel may no more go astray from me. So, any, uh, any prophet who is de a deceived prophet, uh, that's simply a prophet uh, that's been uh, given over by God to um, demonic spirits. And uh, they have a spirit on them, or in them. They think it's from God, but it's really not. It's a demonic spirit. And uh, they will, and as a result, they, those prophets, will uh, be punished or speaking uh, the lies that have been spoken through them by the demonic spirit. Uh, you might say, well, that's hardly fair. After all, it was the demon doing the talking. Yes, but uh, it was the prophet's own uh, sin that put him in that position. So, in the end, he is entirely responsible for whatever the demon does. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening, and we shall uh, pick, continue in chapter 14 next week. Thank you.